we're going to mix up things a little bit and depart from my usual formula. But first, the intro. <music> Hey guys, the common theme of today's video are going to be things that, well, get better with time. I'm going to start with Remarkable 2. In case you're not familiar, this is a electronic notepad, ink, tablet, well, you name it. Anyway, I will review it in here and you can hear me praising hardware and moaning about software quite a bit. However, Today I wanted to tell you about my experience or the recent experience with it. It's been extremely helpful for my work and I can justify every penny I spent on it. And a couple of days ago it just got bit better. Uh, I'm in a beta channel for software updates which means I receive updates earlier. And if you're in that channel as well you will receive soon an update that will enable Google Drive and Dropbox. It's a great little improvement and even though implementation isn't perfect, uh, it has massive advantages. Sheets and docs will be automatically converted to PDFs and you will be able to annotate them and upload it back to either uh, G Drive, uh, Dropbox or Remarkable Cloud. So in the future, when I receive a contract to sign uh, via Gmail, all I have to do is just click on that contract, upload it to my G Drive get it open on Remarkable via Cloud Connection and, well, re-upload it back to Gmail and reattach it. Just don't be like me and skim through release notes. I actually missed the part where you can enable it and I was confused for a bit. Once I got back and properly read the uh, release note, I realized that you have to log into uh, my Remarkable account and you can enable uh, the integration from there. I was expecting that integration to be present in the device itself, but yeah, you'll have to do it via web browser. Let's move to a second item on my agenda, which improved over time. And we're talking about this blue little thing. This is M5 Stack Unit V2. Basically AI vision computer inside this. Really great device. Just take a look at the full video review in there. But what I want to talk about is the firmware update, which brings Wi-Fi which means now you are no longer tied to the device like this via USB Type-C cable and you can connect to it wirelessly. This means that you can take a battery bank, connect it to this device, put it somewhere and receive the data over Wi-Fi. There are two different Wi-Fi modes at your disposal. First, it will create AP points that you can actually connect to and receive that information this way. The second one involves going into the device via SSH access and setting the Wi-Fi credentials yourself. But first, I will quickly walk you through the update steps because I run into a couple of silly issues. To update the firmware, simply download the firmware, put the firmware file without changing its name on the SD card, put the card in and, well, press and hold the button. Now, instruction says that the LED is gonna blink, but on my device, they actually didn't blink. So hold the device, plug the device into the uh, USB Type-C cable and hold the button for about three to five seconds. Once you do that, be patient and don't do anything until you are able to log in. When you log into the device web interface, you'll also notice that your phone should display an access point which start with M5U2. Use the credentials from the back of the device to connect to it and you'll be able to log into the same interface that you were using before. Setting up Wi-Fi credentials via SSH is slightly more difficult. Connect the device to your computer via USB Type-C cable and use a root user to log in. This way you don't have to use sudo before each command. Use the following commands to scan your local networks, display results of your scan. Now that the scan results are here, you can specify the connection number. Now this is the tricky part and pay attention because you'll have to actually use double quotation marks, a single and double quotation marks to enter SSID and password. I was scratching my head quite a bit and that part got me confused for a long time, mostly because I was reading documentation on a very small screen and I didn't notice the special symbols. Once configured, you can either list the connection details or activate it. 
Now, this is a troubling part in which my device settings would be constantly wiped once the device was disconnected from power and there wasn't much I could do. However, after a bit of uh, digging, I found a workaround. For now, just open WPA supplicant file and provide the following information at the bottom of the file. Save the file with Ctrl X and DS to confirm and reboot your M5 stack device. So next time you plug this device into the power, it will preserve actual settings and connect to your local network. Then use Fing or similar app to discover the IP address of the unit v2 and log into a very familiar uh, web interface. The last thing I want to talk about is the latest Kickstarter from Argon40. I'm super excited because I've actually built myself a Raspberry Pi based NAS. And believe me or not, despite having a couple of Raspberry Pi 4 ports, I never got around to upgrading my Raspberry Pi NAS, which is still running Raspberry Pi 3. So a couple of days ago, they actually smashed a goal for Kickstarter for their Argon Eon P NAS. If you say it 10 times really quickly, it gets, well, inappropriate. Back to the case itself, you'll be able to buy it for around $130, the case itself, however Argon promises bundles too. Now it is Raspberry Pi 4 based, which means it will take advantage of the Gigabit Ethernet and USB 3.0 connection to the SATA drive, and you'll be able to put up to four hard drives inside. These are all gonna be SATA drives, however, it is a nice touch that you will be able to add bigger than 2.5 inch drives, which is something you might consider if you have old drives running around. After reading a couple of articles online about it, I came across a very unimpressed users claiming that, well, this is not what they're expecting. I'm not 100% sure what they were expecting, considering a previous track record of Argon 40 and their excellent Raspberry Pi 4 cases. So frankly speaking, if you are looking for enterprise level solutions for your storage, I'm not 100% sure what you're doing on that Kickstarter page. But anyone that is looking to move their data from the computer to the dedicated NAS server, well, it will be definitely interested in one of the cheapest options to actually get a decent NAS. Surely it comes with limitations. However, if I can get away with using Raspberry Pi 3 for my work of not enough tech, I'm pretty sure that there is a massive untapped user base of Raspberry Pi 4 owners that would be interested in repurposing the boards into a dedicated network solution. But the best thing about the Eon Penis is and the best thing about Eon Penis and the best thing about Eon Penis is Penis and the best thing about Eon Penis is and the best thing about Eon Penis is that Argon40 actually agreed to send me the case quite early so I could take a look and share all my um, thoughts and opinions about it to you so you could make up your mind before the purchase. If you're already interested, all the links to topics discussed in this video are going to be in the description. So guys, do let me know what do you think about the video like that because I don't think I've ever covered a couple of topics in a single video. So if this is something that uh, you like, just uh, please leave me a comment in a section dedicated on YouTube website. You know how it works, I'm not going to exp uh, explain all that. You know where is the social media to get the conversation started with me. And as for now, well, I'm going to say bye bye because my coffee is not any better and it's medicine time.